Hello and welcome fellow Wasteland survivors. Thanks for coming, stopping in, hanging out with me today. I do appreciate it. We are at Tanner's Toy Factory. Now, I do have a video out on this, and most of you may have seen it by now. It is a 100% fully automated factory. It does everything that I want it to do, plus probably a few things it shouldn't be doing. But uh, we'll pretend I didn't say that. Anyways, I've had a few comments from some OPs saying that they wouldn't mind seeing, you know, a little bit more about these uh, manufacturing objects and, you know, how they work. So that's what I thought we'd do today. We'd start with the very basics and work our way up. So let's get started. Welcome back, my friends. I'm Dean, and I think what we need to do today to start off with is just take an overall look at everything that we can find uh, in this manufacturing section. We've got all kinds of conveyor belts, uh, ones with stands, ones that sit on the floor. We've got uh, conveyor elevators. We've got trip wires. There's little arms that will help direct the flow of our objects while they're moving along the uh, conveyor belts. We've got all kinds of forges. There are 10 in total. And they do everything from make ammo to make clothes to make food, whatever. We've also got sorters. We've got all kinds of things. Now today what we're going to be mostly working with are the forges and some of the conveyors. So to start off with, I want to show the most simplest thing that you can build. One forge, one switch, one computer, and some power to power it. It will take eight power to power the forge. Now I'm hooking a computer up to it, and I'm just showing that it really doesn't matter where or how you hook your computer up, as long as it's hooked to the same system. And you can program all of your hoppers, uh, forges, everything from one computer, even if it's all off. Now what's really good about these forges is when you choose an object, it'll actually tell you what you need to make it. So therefore, you know what junky items to place in it to be able to create the type of product that you're trying to create. This happens to be the ammo forge. Okay, let's add a little bit more onto our ammo forge. The next thing I've added is this conveyor storage hopper. A conveyor storage hopper will hold any storable object. It doesn't matter what it is. Uh, from junk to any kind of objects you may have made or created. Even weapons. Anything that you can store, you can store in it. Now the next thing that I've added on is a vacuum hopper. The way a vacuum hopper works is it's designed to pull objects, meaning junk, from any storage container. And I mean any. It doesn't matter what storage container, if you can put items in it, it will pull those items out of it. And you can direct them anywhere that you want. We've actually got it connected to our forge in this segment, but you could actually use that to pull junk items out and send it anywhere you want. Now, one thing to keep in mind about the vacuum hopper is it will even suck objects out of your workbench. But because you hold so many objects in your workbench, I wouldn't recommend doing that. Now what we're getting ready to do is hook up some multiple forges. So that way we have, uh, I think we'll do three. And what I'm doing is putting, putting a few of these conveyor belts out. Now if you notice, they'll only snap on one way. The reason is, is because the conveyor belt is running in one direction. And it will not snap onto another conveyor belt running in an opposite direction. Another thing to keep in mind when doing this is build order. Some of these objects will not snap in, even though they can, because of build order. So you may have to actually mess around with that a little bit. 
Now the next thing I'm going to do is put these directional arms. I'm sorry, I can't see what they're called. I never remember what they're called. But it's a way to uh, direct the flow of junk the direction that we want it to go. Okay, I've got three forges out. An ammo forge, heavy weapons forge, and a uh, energy forge, it looks like. I've got each forge hooked to an individual switch, and then the switch is hooked to power. And you can see here that uh, our heavy weapons forge is going to the switch, then over to power, and we've done it one more time with our weapons forge. Now, something to keep in mind when using these directional arms, they need to be actually hooked to your switch. And the reason is, is because when we start this, the whole system will power up, including those arms. But if you have them connected to a switch, then you can turn them on and off or open and close them by turning the switch on and off. And as you can see here, when I turn that on, that uh, arm has opened up and now junk will flow in the direction that I want it to flow in which would be going to this ammo forge. Now if I wanted to use the heavy weapons forge, all I'd have to do is turn this one off, go over to it, turn it on, this arm would close, that arm would open, and then all the junk would be filtering into that particular forge. Now what I was just showing there is there's actually some power hookups on quite a few of these objects but you only need to power one of them if they're all snapped together in a system. When you turn on one, the entire system will come on. Even all the other forges will come on too. But because of the way we are directing our junk, only the forge that this arm is you know, open sending our objects to would actually be producing anything but all the other forges would still be on as well as the vacuum hopper so in theory you could actually power your entire system with one uh, switch but you would not be able to direct the flow of junk into individual uh, forges or directions if that's what you were trying to do. So keep that in mind, there are some limitations by just using only one switch. Now, all you'd have to do is just add on whatever uh, objects or things you'd like to have to collect the uh, things that you're going to be making. Now, keep this in mind. Just because we can suck objects out of a container does not mean we can put them back in. So the only way to store our objects after we've created them with the forge is by using the uh, conveyor uh, storage hopper. Now I have went ahead, hooked up a computer to our power pole, and because of that we're able to access and program anything we want. You can see all three forges are there. we got our switch control, but we've also got our force. Now what force is, is you can actually program how fast or slow you would like objects to be inputted into uh, uh, forges or storage or something like that or out of them. Now I never change this. I always leave it the way it was already programmed. The reason is, is our system already has an issue with plugging. Why increase the speed of it when, you know, it's just going to give you more problems. Now, something to keep in mind when we're trying to put our vacuum hoppers onto an object that we want to suck items out of, you can only put it so close. But, I do got a tip how to get it closer. If you'll grab one of your uh, conveyor belts and move it a little closer, as you can see, it snaps on and it inserts that uh, vacuum hopper into an object quite far. This is an excellent technique for snapping uh, these vacuum hoppers through walls or other objects. And you can do that if, by using that little tip. This is how I was able to get everything so tight and so compact in Tanner's Toy Factory. 
also it helped me by you know not having to snap these forges onto one entire system I could actually make individual systems and then they all work together okay I think we've got the basics covered pretty good let's go ahead and make something that way we can apply what we've seen today into an actual build plus there are some issues that arise when you're doing this and this will help us cover them as well now what I want to do is use this little building here at sunshine tidings now I don't know how this is all gonna fit in here and these uh, objects have a pretty large collision area to them and as you can see even though that snapped it was extremely hard to get it to snap in there because it's so close to the wall what I did is I put a vacuum hopper in with a concrete pillar, group selected it, and got it as close to the wall as I could. Once I've built around, now I can see, you know, how far away from this wall I am, and I could actually balance that out. But uh, I've got a pretty good idea, and I need it actually as close to the wall on the right as we can get it. So the gap is going to be on the left-hand side where our vacuum hopper is at. Now, it's too hard to explain why right now, but we'll see shortly. And yeah, that all fits in here pretty good. Now we could just put a storage container in front of our vacuum hopper. And let's just put a little bathtub here in front of it where we can collect our junk. Now I'm going to use the tip that we just saw before we started this and I'm going to put this vacuum hopper through this wall. There is a light or a lamp here and it's kind of giving me a little bit of an issue. I need to get closer. So I'm just only using the pillar and group select to help cut down the collision area of that conveyor belt so I can get it closer. And yeah, that looks pretty good. I think that's where we'll want it. Now, let's go ahead and finish the rest of our system up out here. I'm going to use a conveyor uh, storage or a conveyor elevator, bring it up so that we're a little bit high in the air. I don't want it down on the ground because I want to send it through this hole in the wall right here. Now, no matter how hard we try, we could never get an object to snap in right there. Also, it's not going to match up with our system. So, once again, I'll use a concrete pillar, group select, and I can go ahead and insert that in through the wall and up as tight as I can to the 45-degree uh, conveyor belt. Now, it wasn't straight inside, so I had to come back, drop it down, and now you can see why we had to get the forge as close to the wall as we could. So it gives us room to run those conveyor belts uh, down the side of it. Okay, the next part of our system is a little more complicated. We need to make it outside. Now this video is dedicated to the very beginning of these manufacture manufacturing objects, how to use them, how they work. This is more of an advanced technique, but it is showing what you can expect to see on the next video on this subject. I'll be showing this and a lot of other advanced tips and tricks on how to use these objects and items. Okay, what I've done here is I've got a conveyor storage connected to a half a conveyor belt, which is where the concrete pillar is at where I group selected it. It also has a vacuum hopper on the side of the storage hopper with a 45 degree conveyor belt coming off of it. What I'm going to be able to do is suck objects out of that storage through the uh, vacuum hopper and back down onto this conveyor belt that I'm standing on. So, get creative. Use some other objects that you have at your disposal to put up some, you know, little walls or little blockage to keep uh, your junk and objects from spilling out onto the ground. In case you don't know, you can start your system up, leave, go do some questing, whatever, and when you come back, it's highly likely your project will be finished, depending upon what you're doing and, you know, how much of it you're doing.
Now keep this in mind when you're creating multiple systems like this is that they will not all power up at the same time because they are not connected together. So they're going to need individual power, but we will wire them together and that's how they'll work as one system. Okay, first thing we need to do, get two switches up. I put a third one out just in case. Now we need to connect our two vacuum hoppers together. Two different ways to do it. The first way, the wire glitch. Super quick, super easy. The second way, take our top vacuum hopper out, connect it to the bottom, and it'll snap right back in because we're using the same trick we saw earlier in the video. Now let's connect our forge up. I've got an ammo forge out and let's connect it to the first switch. When we turn that on, the bottom vacuum hopper will come on. And since we connected a wire to the top vacuum hopper, it now will come on. Next, our second switch is for all of our secondary systems. There are three. So our first uh, system is outside, starts off with the vacuum hopper, goes around to the conveyors that go into the building. Once I power up this vacuum hopper, that whole entire part of the system will come on. If you remember right, all you need is just to hook power up to one thing and everything else will work. Now this conveyor belt system is individual by itself, so we're going to need to power it up. And luckily, we've got a conveyor belt that has a power hookup on it. So this allows us to run individual systems like that. Now we'll connect that up to our secondary switch. And our last one is the one that's coming from our conveyor storage. Now I did have a half a conveyor belt up there. All I had to do was just snap in the correct conveyor belt with that power hookup on it. Okay, let's go ahead and turn everything on and see if everything's working. All right, our bottom vacuum hopper is working. Our top vacuum hopper is working. Conveyors are all going. Yeah, it looks good. Uh, if you remember right, this top vacuum hopper is connected to the bottom vacuum hopper. The bottom vacuum hopper is part of the same system as our forge. Therefore, that's all working on one switch. This is the first secondary system. It's working as well as the one that's going into the building. So I think all we got to do now, put a little junk in our container and let's see this actually work. Okay, to get started, the first thing that we need to do is actually choose what we're going to make. Since we've got an ammo forge up, let's make some ammo. I think 45s. Now food for thought. If you're a low-level individual and you create an ammo forge, some of this ammo type will not be available to you. In other words, if you're level 5, you might not be able to make 45s. Reason is, you haven't even found a combat rifle yet. You're not high enough in level. Also, the ammo forge will not make a couple of ammo types that you can find in the game. They are from the DLCs. The first one is the 7.26. Uh, the second ammo type you can't make is for the lever action rifle from Far Harbor. I don't never use one. I forget what caliber it is. I'm sorry. I apologize. So, let's turn on our forge and let's get busy. Okay, we needed steel and fertilizer and here they come. And yep, we're making some bullets. Now, once I've, you know, made a, the amount of bullets that I want, I just go ahead and turn the uh, forge off. And then you can program it to make something different if you want. Now, you do need to turn the forge off for this to actually activate. So what we're going to do is we're going to create some shotgun shells now. Now, what we'll need for this is fertilizer, lead, and plastic. Since we've already got quite a bit of it in there, as soon as I turn it on, it'll just start automatically making shotgun shells. And I'm just waiting for the last objects to come out of our vacuum hopper. There they are going into our forge. Uh, we're through making bullets, so let's go ahead and turn our forge off. 
Now that we've got our bullets, we're all happy, we're ready to go. What about all the junk that's inside of our forge? We don't want to leave it there. Now, there are a couple of ways you could do this. First of all, you could just take it all out manually. Go put it back in your container. For as much junk as we got, it wouldn't take long. But I think we can do it cooler than that. What's, what's cool in, you know, picking that all up and go putting it in a container? So let's pull up, uh, turn on our second switch, which runs our secondary systems, and the vacuum hopper starts pulling all the items out of the forge out here, and we're going to bring it back in, put it back into storage. And as you can see, that's all passing through that wall very nicely. Um, that two before that's there kind of, you know, is ghosty, so things go right through it. Now, I did build this very quick. I didn't spend a lot of time adjusting everything. Because of it, some of my uh, objects are having a hard time getting into the containers. But this is a great example to show that you cannot put your vacuum uh, hoppers too close in to other objects. The little shroud or hood on it may block objects from actually entering or leaving whatever you've got your vacuum hopper hooked up to. So keep that in mind. You may have to adjust that a little bit. Okay, let's go in. Let's take a look. Here comes our last objects going back into storage and now they're in storage. We can just go ahead and turn off that second switch and there's all of our items back into storage again. Now if we decide to create something all we got to do is turn on the number one switch which runs our forge and it starts sucking all the objects that we just stored out of that container back into our forge and we can just sit there and rotate this around and around and make whatever you would like. Now, there's also another thing to keep in mind. With the way that this system is set up, you could actually use other forges. All you have to do is take it out. Choose the forge that you want, snap it in. Now we are very close to the wall, so it was hard to get it to snap in. But there we go. We got the heavy weapons plant in now. All we would have to do is just connect one wire from the forge up to the switch. Now the only way that I was able to do this, or you can do this, is if you take your vacuum hopper out that you inserted into it outside. So if any objects are penetrating it, it would not snap back in. Keep that in mind when you're doing this. Once again, once we're done, just hook that one wire up, turn on your switch, start feeding all of the objects from your storage back into it, and create whatever you'd like. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, I think that's about it for today's video. Thanks for stopping in, hanging out with me. Now, I'm pretty sure most of you knew quite a bit of what I showed today. But keep in mind, we do have quite a few novice players that are part of our community. They do ask me questions. I do try to help the best I can. And this video is oriented towards those guys. But I'm not forgetting about you other more advanced builders. The next video will have serious tips and tricks on this subject. So I hope I see you then. All right, everybody, thanks for stopping in. I do appreciate your precious time. And just like always, until next time, please stay safe and peace.